have a, a prepared vessel in our midst. Amen. Amen. The Lord has prepared the vessel and he is going, he is going to be the teaching priest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I want you to receive the word with your spirit and receive the word as coming from God, not from a man. Hallelujah. And when you do that, God takes you to a dimension that your mind cannot take you to. Amen. So without much uh, talking, I am privileged to invite to the podium our prepared by some our apostle. The name is Jesus. Hallelujah. this morning and we say thank you for the opportunity and the grace given unto us to live this day to witness everything that you have going to do in our lives. I want to thank you Father for everything that you are doing in our lives and in everyone in spirit life. May your name be praised as we sit before you Holy Spirit. May you do a new thing in our lives. May you transform us by your spirit. May you elevate us into another realm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. Hallelujah. In the heavenly places. Amen. Amen. I think I know you will be doing that for us all the time. I I want to sincerely appreciate my father and my mother who has given me the opportunity to stand here before you all today. Hallelujah. It's a great privilege, and I don't take it for granted, Daddy. I'm very grateful, mommy. So grateful for your love and care and your support. Hallelujah. We thank God for your lives and I welcome every one of you. Thank you for uh, Pastor Dominic and then uh, Pastor Sami for leading us into this dimension. Hallelujah. And I want to appreciate the agape, uh, the spirit praise. I still think I'm in Adiambra. Hallelujah. <laughs> The emperor who called it the agape priest, but spirit life who called it the spirit priest. Hallelujah. Chairman, I think you have to always write it on the thing so that you will not. Spirit priest, quite hallelujah. You have to design it. It's very important. Our brother was talking mystery and saying, hey, this guy is tapping into the spirit. Hallelujah. Today, I want to talk about the mystery of the sons of God or the mystery of the child of God. Hallelujah. And Everything that has been done this morning has prepared a way for the message to come. Hallelujah. You know, when we come to church, it's a the time to receive from Him. From the giving of the offering, from the ministration, and everything. It's awesome. Hallelujah. So we are talking about the mystery of the sons of God, or you can title it the mystery of the child of God so that you understand it. But when we say sons, it will be a bit. Confusing. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. The ministry gives the anointings, the graces. It's not given to selected people, but the entire body. Hallelujah. That makes it more universal than selective. Hallelujah. So God is not selective in our generation, in our age. You know when she was singing, we have many dear old sin. And then those people who have done their part and they are gone. It means it is our time to also do our part. Hallelujah. So it means you are included in the move of God in our days. You are included in the power of God that is going to happen in our days. And I want us to read our first scripture from Ephesians chapter 1. Let's start from verse 1 downward quickly. Hallelujah. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. By the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you and peace from our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According to, according as he has chosen us in him, before the foundations of the world, that we, be, we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I want to stop here for a while. There is something that God has done for us. And the mystery is that God has brought us all into a place and that is in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And now that we are in Christ, we are no more ordinary as anybody can see you to be. So the mysteries of the child of God is enormous. And when we see, let's read John chapter 3, verse 3 upward. The first mystery is that we are born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And go to verse 7 and 8. Marvel not that I said thee unto this, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell from whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of God. So the first mystery is that you are born of God. And that alone makes you a mystery. Hallelujah. Because those that are born of the Spirit, they are mysteries. We are spirit beings. That makes us a mystery. We are born out of the Spirit of God. We are not people that can easily be controlled. That's a mystery. If your spirit is properly positioned in Christ, it will not be easy for the devil to trap you. Hallelujah. Because he said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Now hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell from where it cometh and whither it goeth. It means a child of God who is properly, sanctifiedly born again will not be easily controlled by the devil. Hallelujah. So we are going back to our proper place in Christ. You are a great mystery. In fact, we are the great mystery that has happened in this generation. No diabolic powers can work over you. When you look at Numbers 23, verse 23, it said, There is now therefore no enchantment against Israel. Neither is there any divination against Jacob. Why? Because they are born of the Spirit. Spirit born, enchantment, divination cannot work over you because you are born of God. Hallelujah. That is a mystery. So you should count it one of the greatest privileges to be born of the Spirit and to be born of God. Hallelujah. Because what will destroy others cannot destroy you. You will step on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing can hurt you. Hallelujah. I remember that Daddy, Daddy shared a dream he had some time ago. He said he, he saw a snake and he stepped on the snake. I still remember it very clear. Stepped on the snake vividly until the snake died in the dream. Let me tell you, that is your real you. Anytime you want to discover your real you, when you go to sleep, 
the dreams you have will tell you the state of your spirit. So the message is that you are born of God, but if you don't take time, your spiritual state can be truncated. That is why we have challenges as sons of God. But we shouldn't have. Hallelujah. Because those that are born of the Spirit, they are driven by the Spirit, they are controlled by the Spirit, they are anointed by the Spirit. And they have to be you. Hallelujah. There are times you have dreams and you are wrestling with somebody. It is not your physical man. It is your spirit man. When you see yourself confronting somebody, beating somebody, it is your spirit man. Hallelujah. So the mystery of the sons of God is that you are born of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The second mystery is that you are hidden in Christ. Your life it's hidden in Christ. Take note of this. If you forget this, you have forgotten the most important part of your life. Every Christian, the mysterious part of you is that you cannot be trapped. You cannot easily be accessed by forces of darkness, by witches and wizards. Just like the way they access your brother, they cannot do that to you. The reason is this. Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. And if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Take note. Take note of the verse 1. If you don't get this, you will not understand the third verse. Because he's saying that after Christ has finally finished purchasing your salvation, he has gone to seek with God Almighty. So he is no more on the earth like you can say, oh, my life is sitting in Christ, but he's on the earth here. He is seated in the heavenly places. So there is a hidden place. Even Christ himself is also in that place. And your life, go to the next two. Set your affections on things above, not on things on earth. Let's dead today. For ye are dead, and your life is he with Christ in God. It's a powerful lesson. Take note of this. Don't forget this. Anytime you see the devil try to misbehave around you, know where you should hide. Know where you should run to. Hallelujah. Know where to position yourself well. Because the day you surrender your life to Jesus, you will put in Christ. You were hid in Christ, in God. When I went to the north to do the crusade, when you don't go into the place of darkness, you will not know where you are. When you go to the place where there is darkness and forces of darkness, you will discover what God has given to you. Hallelujah. Even though I know that my life is hidden in Christ, somebody must confess. The demons must confess. The principalities that you are confronting, they must confess. Jesus, when he approached the madman of Galada, the man began to announce and confess what is coming before him. Because what was coming closer was not ordinary, it was a mystery. You are a mystery because your life is hidden in Christ. Take note of this. Don't forget it. And never look down on yourself because where you are is a better place. You are in a more better position than any other person in this world. You are hidden in Christ. Hallelujah. That is awesome. You cannot be accessed. You are in the heavenly places because you are in Christ. Hallelujah. So when we talk about divine protection, this is what we are talking about. Your life is in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. There is something that Jesus said in uh, John chapter 10, verse 29. Read it. Let's see. John 10, 29. Read one of these scriptures. 
For my Father which giveth them me, which giveth them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Can you imagine? If your life is in the hands of Jesus, can he take you, anybody take you out of him? No one. No one. You are a mystery because you are hidden in Christ. That is, it sounds like, ah, all this while, how, how come I'm not so much, you have to be familiar with these things. The mysterious part of you yourself, not the physical you. Because when I get to the ending of the message, you will understand how awesome God has made you. Hallelujah. So you are hidden in Christ. You carry the indwelling spirit of God. That is the third mystery. You carry the spirit of God. How can a human being carry the spirit of God? That is mysterious. There is something in you that is not in others. The power that is above all power is in you. Let's read Romans chapter 8 verse 9 to 12. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that, he, he, that the spirit of God dwells in you. Take note of that. The spirit of God dwells in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Can you imagine that? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So, if any man, verse 9, if any man is not in Christ, if the spirit of God is not in you, you are none of yours. It means you are nobody. Hallelujah. Say, I am somebody. Because the spirit of God dwells in me. Yes, that makes me mysterious. You carry God's spirit going about. Not just an ordinary spirit. There are many people, let me tell you the truth. There are many people, as of now, they enter into church. They are not in the mystery state. They came there with demons in them, witchcraft spirits in them. They are intoxicated with witchcraft and with a whole lot of spirits. They have not allowed themselves to be properly healed. Don't, don't allow it. When you come to Christ, make sure that you push through and enter inside the kingdom. Hallelujah. Make sure that if it's repentance, repent. You know, when you said God should prepare us, no, God doesn't prepare us. We prepare our hearts and ourselves for God to use us. You know, the song got to some point and it was said. Can God now prepare us? God, God, will God prepare you? Then they say, Can you want to? Tell me, you just say, God prepare me, then you prepare you and you start using you. You cannot prepare and use you again. You have to prepare yourself for Him to use you. That's why I say, If a man shall therefore sanctify himself from all these things, he shall be a vessel. Shall be a vessel that will be used for God. Hallelujah. So it means you must prepare yourself. Amen. So when our daddy normally condemns on songs, don't say, oh, daddy, the UBO condemn. It's a revelation. Hallelujah. This is my condemn back. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm taken after my father's footsteps. Uh, it's good. Sometimes it's good we allow ourselves to. Some of the songs, they are very powerful. Tete, uh, tete, you, or Pimipa. We are uh, like potters and uh, clay in the potter's hands. Very awesome. But some lyrics, when it gets to some point, you must take the responsibility. Hallelujah. Amen. Spiritual responsibility. Take it and work on yourself. Come to the place where God's spirit will be delighted to dwell in you. Don't, don't grieve God's spirit. Don't allow things to grieve God's spirit and then you will depart. Because that is the sin. Of your redemption. 
Hallelujah. God's Spirit dwelling in them makes them awesome people. When you refer to John 4 4, he said, Little children, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The spirit that lives in you is greater than the demons and all the unclean spirits in the world. Hallelujah. The life-giving spirit of God dwells in you. Can you imagine? When I say the spirit, you don't understand. The spirit that gives life. The spirit that gives hope. The spirit that heals. The spirit that blesses. That spirit has delightedly come to dwell in your heart. Hallelujah. That's why I said, because you have positioned yourself in the beginning, the first mystery becoming sons, the scripture is there. So I don't need to go to the beginning. Everybody must know this one. Because you have positioned yourself to be sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. The spirit comes into your heart gladly. And now you can call God out of Father. Hallelujah. Four by six. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the Spirit of God is in you. Yeah, I told them. They, <laughs> it is boldly written here. Hallelujah. So you have positioned yourself in the first mystery, then the rest follow. Hallelujah. We have the power of God within us. We have the power of God flowing with us. The Spirit of God has a way of working. When you read uh, John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. I think one of the popular scriptures we already has teach us, you know, I believe that some of you must understand. These are the mysteries. So. And he just said, man, a battle Christ of God. So one thing, and he just said, man, what do you mean, man, who will be? In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man test, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow. Rivers of living waters. Go to verse 39. But this make ye of the Spirit that they which they should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But now Jesus has been glorified. He has risen from the dead, and that Spirit has been given to you. And that Spirit that is now dwelling in you is not just. We are meant to grow with that spirit. We are meant to activate that spirit in us. That nature, his love must grow to us. His glory must grow to us. His joy. When you reach people and they are depressed, when you touch them and tell them to be still, they should receive peace. That is what God has placed us. And I said in the earlier on that God is not selected. He didn't select some of us to do miracles. He called all the new. Testament church, everyone is very like to be in the realm of the mystery. God wants us to be the mystery of our world. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus is Lord. You know that there are some things you do, and then the witches and the wizards they are surprised. Pray a small prayer. You yourself, you don't even believe that that prayer will work. But since God's spirit is in you, something happens, and they wonder, ah, what just happened? Who just destroyed our kingdom? How? That small prayer you prayed carelessly without even giving God the honor, it went and hit their kingdom. Hallelujah! It's like a, a Gaza for Israeli and then Gaza. You know, Gaza, they normally throw their bombs, those Al-Qaeda people. They don't have smart bombs like the Israelis. But God is preparing us to get to the point whereby we are like the Israelis. You will be smart because you understand the mystery. So when you release the bomb, it is going to a target. Hallelujah. But the Gazans, they will just bomb. I, I learned in those days, uh, 
Americans, when they bomb somewhere, those times they used not to have smart bombs. When they bomb, send a rocket bomb or whatever, it goes, they go and sit on TV waiting for news. To know whether <laughs> it just, you know, these days it's no more like that. Things have changed. I'm telling you, they will send a bomb, come and sit on TV to wait and see the news. They will watch news to see whether it has happened or not. No, 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 no. When they killed this uh, guy recently, you see how they did it? The drone was up there. They tracked him. The tracker was on his face. And the bomb was sent directly with his facial, what do you call it? Recognition. And it came and then sliced him. It didn't just kill him. Though. It sliced him alone. And you know those days, when they bomb, they want to bomb you. After bombing you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you are very funny. <laughs> I'm still coming to you. <laughs> when they want to bomb you, they will bomb you and then all other people will be affected. But this is, it is not so. It is just this is a, a targeted and specific. When the thing comes, it is you alone. No one will follow. Even if it is in a car, they will make sure that the bomb it will kill you alone in the car. Maybe there may be small casualties, but for you, you must be sliced because they call it hell, hell missile. It's a hell fire missile. Can you imagine? Hell fire. So, we are talking about people who progress from analog to digital, getting to understand your whole mystery will make you not just free and then you'll be suspecting or thinking, going to watch on TV, see whether your prayer has worked. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, no. You know, there are people who, who want to pray and then they want the enemy that they have prayed to come and confess that No. When you pray, the Bible says in Mark 11, 23, when you pray, that's all. It's simple who bomb fire you know? Just like the smart bomb, the IC. I see. Now you see the way Chinese are bragging and then they are invading Taiwan. It's because they have the smart things. Just one bomb, they know where it will go and land. So no one wants to try the other. The same way the Taiwanese today too, they are digital too. And then they are the ones who create the all the all the all the all. all. System boards, you know, system units, you know, the board board, you know, they are also created phone board and the uh, Apple board and all those things. The Apple phones they are using. The Taiwanese are the ones who created them. So it, it means they are digital in all. They, they, they do the programming. So dealing with such people, you should be very careful. If not, you think China will have stayed long without hitting them. I know they will have started blasting them, but they know that these people. Day to day are digital, they can send one bomb and it may target one of our important area. And when they destroy that place, we are gone. It's just like that. So everybody is careful with how we deal with the other. So your spirit man must be properly prepared to enjoy the divine mysteries and privileges. God will not prepare you, you must prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus. So the Spirit of God is supposed to flow through you, move through you, to bless your world. Hallelujah. Let's, let's allow the Holy Ghost to use us in these modern days. You are a mystery because the Spirit of God dwells in you. So anytime you wake up in the morning, know this, know that the presence of God is with you. The power of God is in you. Hallelujah. The third mystery is that you walk with heavenly hosts. Hallelujah. Ah, he gives his angels charge over them. Psalm 91 verse 11. He said, I will give my angels charge. When they say charge, it means they have been positioned in every area. Hallelujah. You stand here, stand by him, go before him, go him. They have been in charge of your life. Hallelujah. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. 
Verse 1. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stool. So you are walking like this. You have uh, body gas and it's serious. May God open our eyes to see the kind of divine presence and protection that is upon us. Everyone, it's not some special people. Everyone. Now, if you don't believe that you are part of it, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. You will understand what I'm saying. Look at that. Hebrews 1. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit at my right hand, and I make thy enemies thy first to Verse 14. They are they not all ministry spirits? Take note of that. <coughs> Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of. What is the assignment of the angels? To minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. Those who shall be heirs of salvation, and you are part of the heirs. How many people inherit the salvation? How many people receive salvation? So it means the angels are supposed to minister to the one of us. Not so. As long as you are a candidate of salvation, as long as you receive Christ, you have the divine backing of God. The host of heaven is backing you. Hallelujah. Take note of the presence of God in your life and don't move with fear. Don't walk with fear. You are a mystery. That alone. There was a time I was reading a uh, this one woman of God book like that. And it says she went to pray somewhere and it was raining. So it was late night and it was very dangerous to walk alone in that area. So when the woman of God was coming, the, there was some giant angels that were following her. So ah, the people who do the evil no, saw her and they ran and hid. The next day they saw the woman going and said, ah, Yesterday, what kind of people were that were following you? And the woman said, People, I was walking alone here. He said, No, 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 no. They were this giant men. We have never seen them before. Very tall and giant. They were following you. And we ran. He said, eh. And they confessed. They said, Where are you going? They want to come to your church. They just saw what they, they saw the history. God who just showed them. They joined the church, the revival that week. But the woman normally go and pray and come for the revival. So when she was coming back in that night, the angels of God they were following. Look, you don't know what follows you. What follows you matters. Who? Say what follows me matters. Ah, you are not alone. You are not alone. Fear not. For they that are with us. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 14. Therefore send he to that the horses and chariots and great posts, they came by night and encompassed the city about verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was raised early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, And asked, Master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And still the servant didn't understand. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see the Lord. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, behold, what was in there. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Take note of that one. The presence of God was with them, but you see, it was like there was no help. But I prophesy, you will walk with that divine presence. Amen. People will see you walking and they will think that, what is, who is this girl? Where does she come from? How relevant are you? But I'm telling you, in the realm of the spirit, God has given you a great host of presence. The angels of God are with you. The presence of God is with you. Amen. You are preserved on every side. Amen. You are highly protected and defended. Amen. 
No one can disturb you. Disturb you and go for you. Look, there are people that you touch and go for you. But not us. Sometimes we look normal and casual and ordinary. When we go out, forget about the Sunday dress. When we go out, people see you and they think that you are just casual. Look, who is this guy? This is not here. But let me tell you, in the realm of the spirit, you are somebody. Yes. You are a brigadier general. You are a commander. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Ah. We went and then one we went to the Tongo for the first receipt. Ah. One of the night the, the woman came and said she wanted to say a testimony. We thought it was some healing or deliverance testimony. He said no. She saw the men of God, the pastors who are preaching last night. So I wonder whether she was coming to attack us or whatever. <laughs> and then she said, ah. when she saw us. We were wearing military dresses, and you can't say, I can't say no to that revelation because I knew that it was really true. Because when we were, we were on the mountain now, and we were clothed, hey, he said, You were wearing some military dresses and some robe on your waist, and it was shining, and then some things, just describe some things. So when I saw them, and they were very shining, then I ran. I said, Hey, you ran. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, your physical thing, take care of it. Very, very important. Eat good food, drink uh, good water, uh, apply good pomade, and all those things. Yeah? And look fashionable and splashy, and all those things. Okay? But your spirit man, like Dominic was saying, feed it, mm? prepare it. If you prepare it and finish, God will tabernacle it. Look, there are people that when you prepare yourself, God will put you in the priestly realm. It's not that you are called, He will put you there. There are people that are also called, God can also put you there. But there are people because of the way they prepare themselves and how ready they are, God push them. They are part of the heroic family, the priestly family. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said, you are a holy nation, a royal, a chosen, I will get there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, you are a miserable, that one alone, you are a miserable. This woman said it, and people were saying, eh, so, but what else so get up, you know, the proper people say so get up. They said so get up. You saw them, they were dressed, that me and Pastor John, my brother. That were dressed like soldiers. The way we fire on the mountain, then why can't you dress like soldiers? <laughs> the Bible said, we groan them so that we will be tabernacle. Our mortal body to take up immortality. So it means there is a, a level of preparation that when you prepare yourself, God will put His glory on you. Nothing can stop you. So because of that mystery, I'm not saying that I went and fasted and prayed. I, I did that one. And yet, uh, but because I'm already a mystery, when I went into the crusade, I wasn't struggling to do it. There were things I was doing now. The man of God has to force me to pray for him in the church. This thing we could have prayed. Oh, you know, today you must anoint me in the church. But what is this? Because he himself should, should understand the mystery that he is. We are missing that one alone. When you enter somewhere, the devils and the demons they are subject. Hallelujah. So you are walking with heavenly hosts. You carry the divine presence of God. The day you got born again, you receive that angelic presence. You are Christ image. Identity, body. You yourself, you are, you are Christ. There was a time when I heard the Bible said, Ye are Christ. I said, No, I'm confused. How can I be Christ? Me, I'm a man. Jesus is there. But it was a mystery. You look like Jesus. Jesus look like you. Take note of that. Ye are Jesus Christ's body because of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1. When you read the verse 20. 
maybe that same whole sub chapter that's why I made us read that one because there's a lot in it but you are the body of Christ you represent Christ because of Christ's spirit on you because of your salvation because you believe in him he said I came to dwell in you and you are now in me me in you you in me let me preach that message one of the powerful messages that I've ever preached on top there, any day. I in you, you in me. That one is a mystery. And he just said, So what is Christ? That Christ is a mystery. What is he saying? I am confused. Christ is a mystery. Also, what is Christ? Are you not confused? Now, let's see how this thing is happening. How come you are in Christ? Christ is in you. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. I want to show you a statement. And Saul yet breathed out, threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, and went into the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he, if he found any of this way, any of this way, any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them down unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined forth round about him, light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the brick. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But how many of you understand the scripture? Paul, the apostle, who was so used to persecute Peter and then trouble them and kill even the Stephen and Paul, they stole them. He was the one who gave them. He was killing the disciples. And Jesus appeared and said, Why are you touching me? So anybody who touches you is touching the body. I'm telling you, you are not alone. That's what I said. You console me. You comfort me because you are not alone. Don't be confused because only Jesus Christ will tell you that hope. You and the Spirit of God is one. So because of that, anybody who touches you is indirectly touching the Lord. That's why the Bible says you are the apple of God's eye. How can you be the apple of God's eye? Anybody who touches you touches the eye of God. Look chapter 10, verse 16, quickly. You can write the scripture down so that you keep track of it. You are Jesus in it. You are Jesus body. You represent Christ. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. He that despiseth me, is as if he that sent me. So it means anybody that looked down upon you, look down upon Jesus. Anybody that said chill on you, just laugh. Don't be offended. Look, if you know who you are, if you discover the mystery, how God has made you, when somebody says you are a useless person, you will laugh. Because he doesn't know who he is talking to. Useless people don't have Christ. I say, Paul, you don't Christian. Hallelujah. It is not with Christian, but just a one more person. Hallelujah. Because your image has been redeemed. Your identity has been changed. The Bible says we have been changed and transformed into the image of Christ. Take note of that. Too. So, anybody who touches you, Touches the anointed of the Lord. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophet no harm. The Bible said, as they travel from nation to nation and from kingdom to kingdom, he suffereth no man to do them harm. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed. Take note of that. It's not man of God. He didn't say, My anointed pastor of Israel. That is why I said, Everyone of us is included. But the pastors 
people also find because before all your life, they stand out. That one, if you do cry, you are dead. Hallelujah. If you are truly anointed, if somebody touch you, don't fight back. Because if you fight back, you are know, already dead. Let's go. If you know the reason, we challenge you one. So we don't even fight back because this is not a battle of flesh and blood. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Lord. That is why when our brother said his testimony, you don't need to mention Jesus because that Jesus is you and you are in him. I and you. You will in me. So it means there's no room for fear and panicking. Because that car cannot crash with Jesus inside. Come on. For there was a day I was also going, the same thing happened. The car was, the, the driver lost brake and the people were shouting, Jesus, I was just relaxed. I don't know what was keeping me relaxed. But I was so much relaxed that Grabo for you, I don't know who for you. I thought you would have seen Allah. You didn't see Allah. You see, the funny thing is that anytime these things happen, the Muslims inside will never say Allah that. They will say Jesus. Because that is the name that brings deliverance. Hallelujah. The only name that can bring salvation is Jesus. So they will mention that name. So you are the image of Christ. And look, this is your image to give you supernatural audacity. When I say audacity, there are things that you should never be afraid from today onwards. Hey! When you are walking in a dark place and you are afraid, that means you are not, you are not uh, Jesus Christ for you. You don't represent Christ. Hallelujah. When you are in a dark place, who not to soon? Even if they say, I'm Robert, I'm not saying you should be risking your life in a <laughs> place. <laughs> this one is for the people, the men, uh, not women. Women, that's the way when the guys see
Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Hmm. You are the light because you follow Jesus. Don't let me give you such a young and too soon. You are the light. Your environment must be intense. Hallelujah. Your environment must be illuminated by that light. Activate that light. Make sure that you follow him. The fellowship must be unbroken. Hallelujah. When you go to Matthew 5, verse 14, you say, He are the light of the world. A city that is set on you that cannot.
When they say elected of God, that is a misrule. Say you are casting a new rule. And you declare it to God so far. Hallelujah. You are not yet necessary. Say, over here, what is it? Hallelujah. You are hands of God. Look at the uh, Mark chapter thirteen, verse twenty. 23, 22. Mark 13. And I said that the, that the Lord has shortened those days. No flesh shall be saved, but for the elect sake whom he has chosen, he has shortened those days. Hallelujah. So it means you are the elect of God, and because of you on this earth. You see the reason why the rapture has not yet happened? Because God is looking for more elects. You have become one of those singers. In the of God, in the you say, Roman man. Hallelujah. That is the meaning. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. You can write them down. Romans chapter 11, verse 5. Romans 8, 33. Romans 11, 5. Colossians 3, 12. Selected by God, you are chosen by God. You are chosen by God. Hallelujah. So your election is by grace. You are the chosen of God. Chosen of God. In the year you. When you read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are the chosen generation. You read Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Grace to discover myself in you. Grant me the grace to discover myself. 
Kabaria Kabaria sate karos katia na zuse kete. Parua sabre de leko sati kaba. San belebe sakatun kera barata. Le randa zuse kete ke baratu sete. Paru sete katu se barate se. La garasi kate kalabara kata. There's a divine presence in you. There's a divine spirit in you. There's a divine part of you that you need to discover and walk in it and enjoy the fruit of salvation and enjoy the, your salvation in the Lord. There's a place in you. Kada proskete kaba shabrasi kalaga suze kiti in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You want to pray that you will never forget who you are in Christ. Lord, I will never forget who I am in Christ. I will never forget what you have done to my spirit. The grace to maintain his presence, the grace to maintain his power, the grace to walk in that prepared life, the grace to walk in that prepared destiny. We have been wired by the Lord, like our dead normal said. We have been wired, we have been wired, we have been wired to carry his presence. We have been wired to carry his glory. Hallelujah. We have been wired to manifest his nature. And you see the, the electric wires that have been wired. Now they can carry the power. And when you touch it, you know that yeah, there's power in it. I believe if I say you go and touch that naked wire, you will not touch it. Even if there's no power in it, because it has been wired, you will be very careful now whether there is there power in it or not. But God has wired me and you. To carry his glory. He has wired me to carry his presence. He has wired me to carry his spirit. He has wired me to carry his love, his power, his beauty, his presence. We have been wired to attract his presence. We have been wired to work with the angels. Somebody pray that the spirit of God will come afresh upon you. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray about something quickly. The, the enemy has placed a lot of things on people. Even though these are mysterious people. Hallelujah. Uh, look at a mysterious person. Sometimes the devil can try to stop you. Not only you, all of us, including me. But I don't give chance. We rise and pray. You are going to pray. That any reproach in your life, any shame in your life, any programming of hell to limit that divine nature in you, command it to be broken right now. Command it to catch fire in the name of Jesus. Any reproach in my life, any shame that has been programmed, any distraction that has been programmed, no. The wind blow is why I listen. I break out of every shame. I break out of every cage. I break out of every limitation. Somebody pray. Command every reproach, every shame, every limitation that the enemy wants to put on you or on your destiny or on your career. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Command it to break in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we stand in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus. We destroy every spirit of shame, every spirit of reproach, anything that will hinder that glory, anything that will hinder that power, anything that will hinder that joy, be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Any limitation that Satan wants to put on your spirit man from not contacting the spirit of God, let him pray in the name of Jesus. Let it break in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I want to just announce from one or two things. Anybody that has been having strange dreams that are not good, please. I don't want to explain this in the name. If you know that you have been having some strange, uncomfortable dreams, seeing yourself in a state that you don't want, let's come. Let's take this oil and then let's receive, release you from that spirit. Let's release you from that connection. Let's just anoint you and touch you. Anything that Satan is programming, he's starting to in the spirit. Satan is 
Satan will not just come physically and attack you and you will like fall down. He starts with the spirit. You start seeing yourself in a state that you don't want. You start seeing yourself in a, in a way you don't want. You start behaving some way. Eating. Flying. Jumping. See yourself naked in the dream. See people doing things to you. Come. Come on, let's just pray. If there's no one like that, let's do this quickly, 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 quickly. Yes.